I'm Paul Toe, Blessing and Long Life, a Cabo welcome. I've been playing Ori Eglin. We thank the ancestors for their wisdom. Uh, this is part three of our ongoing series on beginning to look at how we can uh, break apart the component parts of an elision uh, to uh, begin to have a better understanding of the litur liturgical words that uh, show up during divination. The, the, um, in my opinion, the most important of those words are the name of the diviner. The name of the diviner is almost always the solution to the problem. Unfortunately, and I don't know why this is true, but unfortunately, most of those words are not translated. So you get books of uh, Odu verses in Yorba and then in um, English, they simply repeat the name of the diviner. I, I think um, one of the reasons for that is that none of those words really show up in the dictionary. They're all liturgical words that were created through the process of making an elision. <laughs> an elision is the creation of words through the use of a sentence and by dropping vowels. So those words are fairly easy to create and fairly common in the liturgical Yoruba, but they're virtually, mm, they don't show up in conversational Yoruba. So unless the dictionary is made uh, by someone who's real conversant in um, liturgical language, it's just not going to um, be possible to translate it. So we kind of have to make up that difference on our own. Uh, so typically the legions are made up of one, two, and three letter combinations that have a specific meaning. And it, it, in order to uh, translate those words, you have to kind of figure out which of the vowels uh, were dropped. So it's kind of like a puzzle. I look at it that way. You kind of try different possibilities until you come across one that makes sense. But it's not necessarily enough for it to make sense. It needs to make sense in the context of both the verse and the spiritual uh, principles of the verse. So today we're going to talk about the word fun, 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 f fun, o fun, and o fun, fun. All right. And we can see another principle in liturgical Yoruba languages that words have related meanings and they have multiple meanings, right? So fun means to give, fun me ray, give me good fortune. Uh, and that's fairly common in conversational Yoruba. Fun, fun literally means the source of giving. So it would be as uh, in conversational uh, yeah, but you could say something like Baba Fum Fum Owa, meaning Baba is the source of the money that we're being given. And I'm not sure that's the best Yoruba, but it would make some sense. But Fum Fum, as a liturgical word, meaning the source of giving, is a synonym for uh, Olorun or God or the Creator. All right. So then, uh, um, Ephun, which is fun uh, with um, the letter E in front of it, which is uh, like saying the giver, all right, the giver. So the giver, again, could be a reference to the creator. Uh, it's definitely uh, Ephun, it's a, it's, a um, it's used to describe chalk. But Ephun, you can see, is the giver of Ashe or spiritual power. Ephun from E Fun, E Fun, uh, the giver of uh, uh, Ashe. And then we have Ophun. Oh, excuse me. Ephun uh, also means white because the chalk that it's describing is white. Hello. So Ophun is the spirit of Ephun. All right. So I said Ephun was. Uh, uh, a giver of Ashe, Ophun, is the spirit of that giving. It's an intrinsic quality of creation that uh, consciousness is in all things. Consciousness is moving towards expansion. Then we have the idea of Ophun, Fun, the source of the power of whiteness. And this is a reference to light, not ethnicity. Uh, whiteness is uh, a reference to what Quantum physics calls a um, 
longitude in the light beam, and each one of that light beam is called Allah. Allah is a carrier of the uh, blueprint for creation. So I would just like to give a couple of examples of uh, how that works. So today I'm going to use the example of Ebora, is from the illusion A, Ebo, Ra. Ebo is uh, an offering. Uh, Ebo actually means uh, alchemy in Yoruba. It's the psychic transformation of EB into E Ray, Ebo. And then Ra is a reference to uh, taboo. But, you know, taboo is a bit misunderstood in our culture. Taboo refers to creating self. Uh, embraced restrictions that allow you to behave in a way that's consistent with your destiny. So if you're destined to be a political leader, there would be a taboo against getting angry in public, let's say, uh, or angry at all. If you have a um, uh, destiny to um, be a charismatic daughter of Oshun, leading ceremonies, you know, the um, taboo would be against denigrating others and so on like that. So it's not just to making some kind of arbitrary restriction. There's real reasons and spiritual reasons behind the taboos that are designated by Odu. There's a tendency in the diaspora to just to call out stuff and then throw a yes or no, is this it? Sorry, that's not the way it works in traditional Ifa. The Odus are generated. The Odus generate the taboo, and they're, taboo, and they're spoken of and addressed directly. Uh, and just so you know, the word for taboo, you know, and across it, no do is a wo e e w o o a wo. Uh, sometimes mistranslated to mean secret, which is not, and then a wo is mistranslated as a wo which means mystery, not secret, big difference. Our, our job as Awos is to teach the mysteries of creation. So uh, I thank everybody for joining me this morning. Uh, we'll talk again. Uh, Ire Asheto.